Hi, everyone. This is David Kohanek from liberalartscolleges.com, and we want to welcome you to today's session, an inside scoop on Moravian College. So uh, I am joined by the Moravian team remotely, and uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves here in just a moment. But the plan for today is this. We've got a, a, a presentation, uh, not too many slides, a dozen slides or so, but you'll really get a sense of what makes Moravian tick. Then you've got, and through that process, you'll hear from both their admission staff as well as some students. And then you'll be able to ask uh, questions at the, at the end of this session. So let's do just a quick test here. If you would, go ahead and in the questions box, uh, let's see, let's have some fun with this. So why, why don't you just say uh, what the weather is at your location right now. So we'll, we'll play with the weather a little bit. So just use the, cue, the, the questions box there. Let's make sure this is working okay. Uh, and tell us, how warm is it where you are? <coughs> Sounds like somebody's already got a cold. <laughs> All right, so again, use the Q&A. There we go, there we go, okay, cool. So let's see, we've got sunny in the mid 40s, damp in 35, cold but sunny. Excellent. All right, good. Cold, yeah, most, mostly cold here. So not, not a lot of, uh, uh, we don't have folks in a lot of beautiful, uh, beautiful areas. But uh, the 50s, uh, no, nobody's saying 80s or anything like that. So all right, awesome. So the Q&A is working. That's also how you will ask your questions. So go ahead and type those questions in as we go along. And what I will do is when we get to the end, I will then ask Josh those questions, who's gonna be our presenter today. And, uh, and then we'll be able to get those questions answered. And Josh, you, you got those uh, questions that came in ahead of time that I sent over as well, correct? Uh, yes, I believe so. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I can actually access them um, while the presentation's running here. I, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I will I will pull them up on my end and we'll make sure we cover them when we get to the Q&A, all right? Yeah, that right. works. Very good, so that said, I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. If, if we could just do some quick introductions so we, we hear who's on the line. Great, fantastic, thank you, Dave. Um, so my name is Joshua Ginder. I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions here at Moravian College. Um, I particularly travel in southeastern PA, sort of the Philly suburbs area of my travel territory, and I also work with students in Connecticut. Um, but I'll be here presenting um, alongside three of our fantastic students, and I'll have them introduce themselves quickly as well. Hello, everybody. My name is Woodrow Battle. I'm currently a senior here at Moravian College. I'm a graduating economics and policy major with a minor in political science. And I'm involved in the Jazz Band, the Moravian United Student Government, the track and field team, and I was elected onto the Moravian Board of Trustees for a two-year term, which will be uh, resolved this coming of uh, my graduation. So thank you all. Hi, everyone. My name is Alina Baker. I'm currently a junior here at Moravian College. I am a Law and Society major with a pre-law concentration and a minor in Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. Um, at Moravian, I'm pretty involved. I'm a first-year resident advisor. I'm president of the Pre-Law and Sociology Club. I am a 26-point student ambassador. Um, I am a STARS representative, which stands for Student Alumni Representative. Um, and I'm also a MAC representative, which is our Activities Council. Hi, everyone. My name is Anissa. I'm a Tolmo Kadir. I'm a transfer junior and a psychology major. Um, currently on campus, I'm involved in 26 Ambassadors. I'm also a USG representative, and recently I just rushed and joined Alpha Sigma Alpha Sorority. All right. So those are our students. Um, feel free to put in any questions that you would like to direct to, to them in particular, especially if you heard something that you'd like to learn more about. Um, but we will jump right in here and get started. So. Um, to begin with, of course, I think it's helpful for, for everyone to get a, a, a better sense of who Moravian is just through our mission. Um, so it's, it's up there on the, on the screen. You can take a look at it. Um, but what I like to emphasize about Moravian's mission is, is how true we have stayed to our traditional founding uh, and how we kind of carry that vision into 
the future as well. So for those of you who might not know, Moravian College was founded in 1742 um, by the followers of John Amos Comenius, so members of the Moravian faith. Uh, and central to their belief beyond their faith backgrounds is, is just a belief in educating everybody, that um, all peoples, to, regardless of their um, their affiliations to any group or, or what background they come from, deserve to receive a quality education um, really rooted in the liberal arts. So that tradition started by us being the first college in the country to educate women um, and also the first to educate Native Americans in their own language. Um, but that continues today in the sense that we have students coming from truly all different walks of life, all different socioeconomic backgrounds, um, and making sure that each of those students has an equal access to the great resources, the technology, and of course, the opportunities that a great liberal arts college affords students for not only their time in college, but well beyond uh, into graduation. So um, that's so important to, to us here, and you see it lived through our students' lives every single day. Um, our current president is an alum of the, of the college, and he very much lives out those traditions and, and those philosophies and, and all of his work. And so it's just something that I think is helpful for everyone to know before you get to know anything else about Moravian College, you have to know that we are very much proud of our heritage and, and continue with those traditions and, and causes into the present day and well beyond that. Um, so then to, to give you a little context that's just where we are, um, not many people know where we're located, so we want to want to point that out. We are located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, so sort of East Central Pennsylvania, about an hour and a half from New York City, and about an hour north of Philadelphia. So our students have access to both of these major metropolitan areas, and of course have plenty of resources here in the Lehigh Valley, where we're situated, um, and in Bethlehem in particular. Um, but we want to make sure that students know we're, we're really not too far away from, from excitement beyond our own resources here in the Valley. And, and that's important, of course, for social experiences, uh, and you'll hear more about those later with some of the, the clubs that take trips to these locations or, or the way students tap into these resources for larger sporting events or um, music and, and theater productions. But it's also incredibly important for our students to, to tap into these resources for internships. Uh, many of our students start their internship search typically in the Lehigh Valley or even just here in Bethlehem. Um, but when that might not satisfy what they're looking for, they have New York City, they have Philadelphia, they even have Allentown. If they're looking for just a slightly larger city, um, Allentown is 20 minutes away. So they have access to all of these incredible areas that really give them what they need to, to continue to be successful beyond our campus borders here. Uh, and I do want to have, um, in just a moment, Woody talk about one of his experiences um, and his internship and how he taking advantage of these resources. Before I jump into that, um, I also want to take an opportunity to say that about 75% of our current population comes from the state of Pennsylvania. So largely we are a Pennsylvania school, um, but we are also drawing students from countries um, or countries around the world and, and other states all over the country. Um, so it is an incredibly diverse population here on campus. We have about 1% international students coming from the Middle East, Europe, um, parts of Africa, as well as all different parts of Asia, and and really we continue to grow each year in terms of that geographic and, of course, other forms of diversity, and that's, and that's really important to us, especially as an admissions team, but as a community. Um, so we also have about 25% of our population commute to campus, uh, and those students, of course, are coming from the local Lehigh Valley, um, so typically more local students, but that's important to us too because it, it shows that we, we serve our immediate population, our immediate community. Um, but at the same time, those students who commute are absolutely just as involved, in some cases even more involved, than our students who live here on campus. And to show that that community really is widespread and includes all members um, is really important to us. So before I continue on, I would like to have Woody just to talk a little bit about his internship experience and, and how he's been able to tap into these resources. Definitely. So like Joshua mentioned, I recently fulfilled an internship um, working with Tiffany & Co., the um, global uh, diamond and jewelry company. Uh, we have a board of trustees member who's um, pretty high up in the company, and I was fortunate enough through my endeavors to um, garner a pretty strong connection with him in which he asked me to, to help him out with a project in their global supply chain division. So 
after being granted this opportunity, I was I was then um, not given much structure as to what it was I'd be doing within uh, my capacity, but really just a, a mission and a goal attached to the work that I'd be doing. And um, come the summation of the internship, they were blown away with what it was that I was able to to come up with them. But if I had not been given such free range in the internship to um, take my own approach to what it was I was tasked with, um, I can't say that I would have been able to produce as quality a result. So uh, the ability to have that internship, I've also had multiple other internship opportunities with the, uh, the governor's office through Pennsylvania, as well as a few others in the local area. But I can't think of a handful of students off of my head or I can only think of a handful of students off the top of my head that haven't been involved in some kind of internship that they would not jump at an opportunity to speak about like myself. Sure, before, before we go on, can, can you just have the students, um, just tell us where, where their hometown is? Is, is everybody there from Pennsylvania or, or beyond? Sure, no, good question. Yeah, I'll have them introduce themselves. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So I'm from Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, which is a town about 30 minutes north of Bethlehem, PA. Um, I'm from Conkletown, Pennsylvania, uh, somewhat near Stroudsburg, near uh, Woody, um, and it's about 45 minutes from Moravian College. I was raised in Easton, PA. Um, it's about 25, 30 minutes away from the college I commute. Okay, so to continue on and to dive a little bit deeper to talk more about our, our very immediate community here, uh, as I mentioned, Moravian College is located in Bethlehem. Um, and really our, our history as a college and, and is very much intertwined with the history of Bethlehem because the Moravians founded the town in 1741 and then one week, or actually six months later in 1742, they founded um, the school that would grow into what we know today as, as Moravian College and, and all of its glory. So we, we really do have that tied relationship with the town. And one of the best parts about that is we actually have a south campus. Um, it's only about a half a mile or so south of our, our main campus, um, but it is downtown Bethlehem. And it, and it has buildings that are as old as the 1740s and 50s, all the way up to um, a relatively new residence hall that was built within the last five or years or so. Uh, so our entire campus is both incredibly historic and also incredibly state of the art. And I think for our students, they they love this kind of combination and interaction of, of history and and modernism because they really get to see how these two things intersect um, in their daily lives. And not only is it in the the tactile history of the buildings themselves, um, but also again how we how we are still true to those traditions and, and those roots um, upon which we were founded. So in our more recent buildings, our, our newest academic building was completed in 2017, and that is the Sally Breitigam McShevitt Center for Health Science. Um, and that is an effort to in, encourage students to, to really explore these health science professions um, in, in a really incredible atmosphere where we have a state-of-the-art virtual cadaver lab, the only one in the region and one of the few in the country um, where we actually have nurses and, and other physicians who will come from local hospitals to use our virtual cadaver lab um, to, to work on many different things that they, they wouldn't be able to do without this kind of a resource. Um, in addition to that, we have the Zenzenko New Media Center um, that was provided to us by one of our, our more recent alum who um, are, is allowing students to really get a hand in digital media and all types of film and graphic design and um, and photojournalism and, and having that access in, in, our, in the basement of our, our library is incredible for our students. Uh, and on top of that, one of our oldest buildings, the Brethren's House, where our music department is housed, just finished renovating and adding a state-of-the-art music studio for all of our music students. So in every corner of campus, we have these combinations of historic and new modernized um, opportunities. So one, one actually an interesting fact about Brethren's Hall is that that actually was a Revolutionary War hospital. Um, so, so not many campuses can say they had a, a Revolutionary War hospital as one of their music suites. So that's something that we can hang on to. Absolutely. Yeah. Good point, Woody. Um, so again, that combination is, is really important to our students and something that they really get to live through um, in, their, in their daily lives. So jo Joshua. Yeah. So, so um, I, I've got a question for the students. Um, 
when I was on when I was on campus, one of the things that really struck me was in in fact that that you had these two campuses that seemed to have very different personalities. And uh, it, it's it's also for for those on the line, it's also uh, you probably know, but if in case you don't, highly unusual that a small liberal arts campus actually has two different campuses, right? Usually they're very concentrated in a certain area and that area tends to be a ways away from downtown. Now in this case, you've got South Campus as well as the main campus and South Campus is integrated in downtown. Can can the students just give us a little bit of how you view South Campus and, and, and maybe the, the difference between the two? Yeah, thank you. Question. So I actually lived on South Campus last year. Um, I was a residence life advisor on South Campus. Um, so I had the, the luxury of seeing North Campus life, South Campus life, and then I'm back on North Campus this year. But there is a dichotomy in the feel from North and South Campus, and that's what actually draws a lot of people to South Campus. You have a feeling where it's, it's such that it's a home away from home aspect where you go to your classes on North Campus for, for many students. For a lot of students, they might still have classes on South Campus, but it's a simple shuttle ride back to North Campus and then back down South at the end of the day. So some people make it um, uh, uh, seem as though they're, they're going to, a, to school in the day and work, or work in the day and then they come back to their, their uh, dorm in, on South Campus. So it does have a different feel in that respect. Also in the difference in majors really provides to a different feel on South Campus as well. You have all of the music and arts on South Campus. So there is a different feel because of the different students that are on South Campus as well. So if you wanna see a performance or any or, or more um, artisanal um, attributes, you'll, you'll go to South Campus and you'll, you'll get to, to, to splurge on those as well. You get to see the art studio or the, the concert hall, which has a variety of different uh, musical and endeavors happening regularly. So if that speaks to a little bit of the, the difference in feel in South Campus and North Campus, even though the majority of majors are on North Campus, there still is a, a nice uh, difference in what it feels like to be on South Campus than it does on, on um, North. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Um, and just to add to that, uh, new this year, the college actually um, put our Moravian College bookstore um, on Main Street, Bethlehem, which is very close um, to the south end of the campus. Um, and that bookshop, um, the Moravian bookshop is actually the oldest one in the country. Once again, it's uh, quite unusual to be able to say that our bookstore is the oldest one in the country. Um, so very cool, very fun fact. But um, just having that aspect of it um, really prompts families and prospective students um, and even uh, us, when we need to go rent a book for a class, we, uh, it's just a short shuttle ride down, um, but that really has integrated into uh, more of a flow down there and more of a connection, kind of. Um, I myself have never lived on South Campus like Woody, so he can speak more mm -hmm. to those um, home away from home points, but um, the bookstore is definitely a, a great plus for that. Um, so I came from a liberal arts community college and we had three campuses. Um, and the one thing that we always had a hard time doing between the two residential, well, no, it wasn't residential, like Monroe and Bethlehem campus for Northampton was having the same opportunities and having a way to, in, to have the students feel as equally involved. It almost just felt like a competition between the two. But when I came here, it was nice to see that students on South were coming up North for events and the students on North were going down to South for events. The, the advertisement were just as equal um, you can be, like as a commuter, I had a uh, commuter meal plan, but I can eat on north, I can eat on south, um, and the walking distance is really nice, like in the spring and the fall, I could walk down there with my friends, walk back up, the shuttle's there, so I think there's just a lot of convenience, um, and like I said, I grew up in Easton, and there's moments that I prefer coming to downtown Bethlehem, because I could literally stay in the library Sunday at north, and then decide to walk downtown and visit people on south and dinner, so I think it's really great. And David, you also did mention too how it is. It very much feels that it's more integrated with the downtown area, and, um, and because again, it is situated right in downtown. That is very much the case. I think our all of our students take advantage of everything that Bethlehem has to offer, but because our students who live on South Campus can walk two minutes to the nearest uh, restaurant or coffee shop, um, they definitely take advantage of sort of living amongst that community downtown. 
Uh, and it's a great way for them to, to make those deeper connections with the, the town of Bethlehem in their four years, too. Does that answer your question, though? Does that help? Myself there. Yes. Thank you so much. Great. All right. So uh, to talk a little bit more about our the academic experience, of course, something that we, we want to make sure we, we share is just the really the incredible opportunities that our students have in the classroom um, and beyond. And we have a lot of great things to talk about here. Um, of course, important to emphasize just that our average class size is about 17 students. Typically, those classes uh, will cap off around 25 or 30 students. You may have a select few that go above that, but really our professors, um, just as a campus community, we like to keep those smaller class sizes so that students actually do have the rich experience of working one-on-one -on -one with their, their fellow classmates and, of course, their faculty members. Uh, and an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And, of course, keeping that small ratio is important to us so that students really do access their professors. They take advantage of building these connections and having the relationships, not only for professional and academic endeavors, but, of course, to have mentors that, um, that really work with them throughout their four years. And whether it's your advisor that every student will have throughout their four years here, or whether it's just a professor you end up having for a class, uh, our students really do create these connections. And that is something that we, we talk about a lot on campus, but it is very much a lived experience in all of our students' lives. And I, I know um, each of our students here has a great experience, and I, I, I want them to share just to put some context behind these numbers, um, especially because we know a lot of liberal arts colleges share these numbers, um, but for our students here, it is, it is part and parcel with what their life on Moravian's campus is like. Yeah, definitely. So on the student to faculty ratio and that's in the average class size both. So I, I had a class freshman year that I, that was only five students in it, and myself included. So there was only four other students besides myself in this course. So it was uh, really difficult to, um, to not show up to the class to not even to participate. So it was a really interesting environment. Also, on the, the frequency in which I'll see a faculty member, I can't go a day without seeing all of my faculty members that I have a course with or members that I've, that I've um, had a previous course in the past few semesters. So I even run next to one of my political science professors in the, in the gym on a regular basis. And we talk about the news they have on the TVs, but I've, I've talked to professors that they're on their way to lunch and they'll stop and turn around and we'll go back to their office and talk for another two hours. But it's um, difficult to, to, to throw a rock and not see a professor that you, that you know pretty close. Yep. And just going off of what he was saying, um, just from high school life, it is such a, a, a different world. Um, and I know that's fairly cliche to say, but it really, it really is true. Um, I graduated from a high school of almost 500 people. Um, it didn't stick out too, too much. Um, I was in a class of 30 to 35 people, hardly raised my hand, hardly spoke out. And now, um, being at Moravian College, I am in an independent study, and it is just one professor that I admire um, and appreciate so much, um, and myself. And we sit in her office once a week, um, and we have crafted an, uh, an entire course study over um, a semester. Um, and made it up exactly how we would like it, what we would like to focus on, and what we discussed. And it's been transformational. Um, I have been able to talk about things with her that normally maybe you wouldn't be comfortable sharing with other people, that you know you get that classroom shyness from. Um, but it's been amazing. Um, designing your own syllabus, picking when you want to go and what you want to talk about. Um, and it's the one-on-one -on -one is just truly like revamp your whole educational experience. Um, so my experience with classroom size is very different. I was homeschooled second grade through high school and then I went to community college where our class sizes were substantially bigger. Um, so when I got to Moravian, I was really happy to see how small the class sizes were just because like we, like they all mentioned, you get to know the people in your class, you get to know your professors. Um, it leaves more time to get to know the students. Like some of my closest friends, we had class last semester and we see our professors in the halls all the time. But I think it also makes it more personable because professors are likely to say to you after class, like if you need any help, some of them that live 10 minutes away on the weekend, like I can come to the library, if you have a group project, I can help you. Um, so I think that 
small class size and the willingness for professors to help is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah. And it might seem like this doesn't connect as well as it's going to, um, but that the point there that we're an Apple distinguished school, I think is, is really important for us to talk about, especially when we're talking about the relationship with faculty and, and the classroom experience, because our students have access to all the technology they need to be successful, honestly, and, and then some. Uh, and, and being an Apple Distinguished School, we received that designation this year, and it will, um, it will last from 2018 through 2021. Um, and what this means is not just that we are using technology in our classrooms on an everyday basis, but more so that we are a center of leadership and educational excellence by utilizing this technology, by taking advantage of it, in all of the ways that we can to, to advance the student's education, to, to make our campus community thrive in ways that you simply couldn't without access to this technology. So one of the ways that we do that, and of course the one that our students probably love the most, is that every student at Moravian College is given a MacBook Pro and an iPad uh, when they enroll. And that's, that's part of their experience here. They use it for the four years that they are here on campus, but it is theirs to keep. So when they graduate, they take it with them. Uh, and this initiative was put forth by our current president primarily to make sure that we did level that techno technological playing field that students are coming from all different backgrounds to our campus many of which might not be able to afford a top-of-the-line macbook pro um, but that's something that we don't want them to have to think about we we provide them with that technology so that they can start their very first day of classes on a level playing field with all of their classmates and moving forward continue to grow and use this technology, become savvy with it, so that when they graduate and they start in that first career or they start in a graduate program, they're not learning how to use Excel for the first time, or they're not learning how to, to navigate a Google Drive and the benefits of using that with your, your peers and your colleagues. They have already done that for four years. Uh, in many cases, and our faculty are using it even beyond just simple presentations. I know our president taught a seminar and him and his class built their textbook through one of Apple's apps. Um, so they took direct advantage of all of those technological resources to, to have a learning experience specific to those students in that class that would then benefit students um, for years to come. So a lot of incredible things that, um, that we've been doing. We're one of the few colleges in the country to receive this designation. Most schools are, um, that receive this are high schools. Um, and we are one of, I believe, only two schools in Pennsylvania to do this. So it's, it's something that we're very proud of, but more so the reason that we were awarded this is because we are making strides forward in our, in our students' education by providing this incredible access to technology. So to dive a little bit deeper into the academics, we talked about what that classroom experience is like, but what are our students studying? Uh, we have over 55 majors and programs here on campus for our students to explore. Um, we are a liberal arts college, so we offer all these traditional liberal arts majors. Um, but one thing that does certainly stand out for a lot of our students is our, our nursing program. Um, it's, it's hands down our most popular in terms of application numbers. Um, it also coincidentally is our most um, competitive as a result. Um, but it's a great opportunity for our students to, to come in and, and pursue a direct pre-licensure BSM program that prepares them for a career as a successful nurse um, following. Uh, you see some of our other top majors up there as well, management, art, sociology, accounting, um, all great programs and of course plenty beyond that. Um, but our students do have the flexibility both through our core curriculum, which we call Learning in Common or LINK for short, um, and the flexibility of the majors to, to double major, to self-design their own major, or perhaps to have a major with two minors to make sure that they are pursuing their passions and, and, and studying the things that really excite them on a daily basis. And then they get to, um, to work hard at to be sure that they are preparing themselves as much as possible for their careers or for graduate programs beyond Moravian. Uh, a few of the programs I do want to point out though that um, are either unique to us or are things that are, are distinguishing factors that our students take into consideration when they're, when they're looking at Moravian um, are we have a Peace Corps prep program we have a, a music program that is audition based and, and that students really dive deeply into music, especially within a liberal arts setting. Um, and then we also have a, a writing certificate program that our students can explore. And so to talk about each of those a little bit, um, the Peace Corps prep program is exactly as it sounds. 
It is a, a program where a student upon completion would receive a certificate saying that they have completed this program. Um, it is on their transcript and it, it enhances their application to the Peace Corps if they choose to pursue that path beyond graduation. Um, but as a student, they can be studying anything they want on campus. All they'll simply do is, is fill out an application to the program to focus in on a certain area that the Peace Corps um, has within their, their purview. Uh, and they'll take some extra language courses, they'll take core classes focusing on peace and justice and, um, and educating English language learners. And then they'll also take electives and other courses within that specific sector that they're interested in. So that could be education or healthcare or agriculture. Um, and by the completion of this program, again, students have not only gained a better understanding of how the Peace Corps works in, in our world and, and the ways that they can contribute to their global communities through an organization like the Peace Corps, um, but if they choose to continue on and pursue um, service in the Peace Corps afterwards, this enhances their application that much more. Um, so for some students, it's a great way for them to expand their horizons um, just here on campus. And for other students, it very much is a way for them to prepare for that next step that they know is in their lives of, of pursuing the Peace Corps. We've had over 40 alumni participate um, and serve in the Peace Corps since its founding in 1961. And we continue to have students who, who come through really seeking out this unique program. Uh, the writing art certification is something that I like to talk about because it, it shows how we encourage all of our students to become quality writers. Um, now, the certification itself is, is oftentimes added on to an English major um, and, and therefore focuses more on the writing component of the English major. Um, but we do offer courses that are writing specific in professional writing, creative writing, even digital advertising or writing of instructional manuals, all those different unique courses uh, for students to add on to their major so that they can continue to enhance their capacity as a writer. Um, I know a lot of our our science students take some of those additional writing courses because their writing might not be their strong suit, but they, they have to write lab reports. They are publishing papers with their faculty members, or they hope to go on and do research. And these writing courses allow them to, to further enhance what they're doing in the classroom and what they do with their faculty members. And it's another certification that, that, that overall enhances our students' degrees. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, the other program is our music program. Uh, and this is, I think, something that I, is important for us to, to emphasize because smaller liberal arts colleges typically have music programs, but I believe ours is, is particularly strong and allows students to, to really take advantage of both music and the liberal arts setting. So we do offer a Bachelor of Arts and we offer a Bachelor of Music. Um, and within both of those degrees, students can study composition or performance or sacred music or um, music education. Um, and then there's technology and audio recording as well for students who want to look more into the business side of the music profession. Um, and so our students audition into this program, they are focusing on all of the traditional studies of music. So keyboard exper keyboarding um, experiences, as well as, of course, oral training um, and all of those great things. Uh, but they're, they're becoming professional musicians through and through as presenters, as those who are going to travel and start to gig in Bethlehem and in the Lehigh Valley. I know our music students are, are consistently looking for opportunities to grow their talent outside of Moravian um, campus. And, and it is an incredible program. It is still one that continues to grow for us. We see growth exponentially every year. Um, but it's important to know that if students are looking for that really strong, rich ed music educational experience, they can do that here within a liberal arts setting and still be prepared to move on into a career in business or a career in in finance or a career as a music therapist, even um, by pursuing that music degree with us. So certainly something to, to keep in mind as well. Are there any questions about our sort of our academic experience before we move on? Yeah, so I, we did have a question that came in, Josh. Um, uh, is there music business? Is there the combination of business and music? There can be, absolutely. So, for, yeah, for students who want to do a double major um, with anything and music, they would pursue typically the Bachelor of Arts. So it's still a pretty traditional music degree, but without some of the additional courses, so it gives them a little more freedom to, to double major, the most common of which is absolutely business, um, either management or accounting, really any one of our business focuses. Um, 
for students to combine that. And we've seen a lot of students who have done that and then pursued their MBA following it. So if they really truly are looking into the music industry and being on the management or business side of all of that, um, that is the perfect way for them to, to hit the ground running as soon as they graduate is having these dual degrees. Uh, believe it or not, we do have students who have pursued both our nursing program and our music program. Uh, that is the most rigorous combination we can all think of. So while we don't encourage that, it is absolutely possible. Um, so students are really taking advantage of, of, again, this flexibility of curriculum and, and the liberal arts um, structure of the college's academics. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So to move on to, to more of our student life, some of the more exciting things that um, our students here I know are pining to, to talk about. Um, and I know things too that, that all students in, in their junior and senior year of high school are really looking to, to explore when they get to their college campuses. So one of the big things that um, is really important to us here on campus to all students and is, and is not a requirement, um, but that is service. That's getting involved with some form of service or volunteering, um, giving back to their local community here in Bethlehem, um, in the greater Lehigh Valley, and then students are really traveling all over the country and around the world as well. Um, so many of our students start that in what we call the 1742 experience, and this is a, a first year orientation um, program, a pre-orientation pre program, I should say, uh, where students come to campus about a week or so early and engage in service all throughout the valley. There are mentors who lead them through this, and it's all very well designed and intentional, but the purpose is for students to grow as leaders, to engage with the community of the, of the Bethlehem area and the Lehigh Valley. Um, and also to see all of the ways that they can continue to give back throughout their four years here. Uh, one of the fantastic opportunities that this provides then is a direct connection to uh, what happens in the first semester of classes, which is called Heritage Day. Uh, and that's one of our traditions here on campus where the entire campus community is invited, and many, many of which do, um, get involved and do service throughout one day um, in September in the entire Lehigh Valley. And typically every year we see up, upwards of 2,000 hours, uh, service hours being given on that day alone. Uh, and again, this is just a way that our entire community sort of, sort of gets involved. So I want uh, Alina to talk about that a little bit more um, with her experience and, and you can hear from her perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Heritage Day is amazing. And um, actually funny story, I was a Heritage Day leader for the second year this year. Um, that's basically just the, the head person of the group that you're put in to go to a service site. Um, and Anissa, who's also in on this uh, webinar, who's sitting right next to me, was in my group. And that's how we became really good friends. Um, so just interesting how that works, a little peep into that. But um, Heritage Day is amazing. And it's something I personally talk about to prospective families all the time. Um, being at a liberal arts school such as Moravian for four years um, as a private institution is such a privilege. And I think the main thing for me, especially for her to say, is just to show how grateful you are to be in this position, to be a student here, to be exposed to what you are exposed to every single day. So to give back to your community in this way, um, whether it's to a local nonprofit or just you know, to the community in general, going to the elementary school and, and cleaning up <laughs> their, their supply closets or, um, you know, anything really. We went to um, a center for um, little kids and elderly people um, and just helped them get organized because without that organization, they cannot continue doing what they do for these people. Um, so we gave back to them so they can continue to do their influential work in the area. Um, so Heritage Day is great, and I also appreciate how early it is in the semester because um, that'll help students really get a sense of um, volunteer work, community work. Um, going, it is called Heritage Day for a reason, going back to your roots by the means of this service um, and really experiencing this and also getting a foot in the door with our um, Center for Career and Civic Engagement, which plays such a huge role on our campus. Um, excuse me. So I wanted to add to that a little bit, like going past Heritage Day. Heritage Day was actually one of my favorite days. Um, I was so happy that I got to get involved. And then, yes, that's how Lee and I became really good friends. Another funny story, our, like, faculty member I thought was a student and was not a student, but a faculty member. So it's fine. 
But just to expand on that, so Habitat for Humanity is run through the Civic Engagement Center, and next week I'm actually going to Houston with them for our spring break trip to help out. And I thought that was a really great opportunity because it's extremely low cost, and in the application you basically say why you want to go, and anyone that's grown up in this area, like you've seen just on the East Coast what Sandy did, you've watched the news, you've seen everything, and to be at home and not really have the not have like the ability to go out and to help because you don't have the funds for you don't have the transportation so an experience like this to be able to have a school send you down there very low cost housing everything paid for to go help out i think is a really great community experience and i know so many people that have gone and they're just like it's it's a really great experience so i think the community service here is wonderful And that's a snapshot into it. Uh, I would say at least 75% of our students are doing some form of service. Really, I could say 100% because Heritage Day includes all of our first year students. But beyond that first year experience, our students continue to, to get involved and, and stay engaged. And, and so that's just become an inherent part of, of who we are here as a, as a community. Uh, now, more on the student life side of things, uh, our students are are so incredibly involved. You heard from our three students here how much they're involved in, and I'm sure they each cut their list a little bit short so they didn't go on for too, too long. But they, uh, the students here on campus take full advantage of all of the clubs, all of the activities happening. Um, and we, we sort of like to say that a student who finds their home at Moravian is not a student who is going to class and then going home and just doing their work. They are going to class and then they are going to one of their club meetings. They're going to an event that their club is hosting. They are going to possibly their, their sports team's practice or they're going to a rehearsal for one of the music programs. Uh, and then they're going home and studying and waking up the next day and doing it all over again. And they are really taking advantage of, of everything that we have to offer. So as a quick snapshot, you can see our, our student government was ranked um, by the Princeton Review as the fifth most active student government. I'm going to have Woody talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Um, but we have over 74 clubs on campus for students to get involved with. Everything from things like Habitat for Humanity, as Anissa mentioned, to an equestrian club. Uh, actually, that's, that's an, uh, a sport on campus for our students to get involved with. Um, but then clubs that are focused more on business, ones that are focused specifically on academic departments and for students to sort of sharpen their professional, um, their skills there. And of course, clubs that are just a little more fun, whether it's an environmental concerns club that does a lot of hiking or whether it's um, students who are just gaming together. Um, really, everything you can imagine is here on campus. And, and, and we do see students really crossing over into a lot of those different spheres, uh, which I think is exciting because it shows how close knit this community is as well and how important each individual experience is for our students. So I'm going to have Woody talk a little bit more about his experience with the United Student Government. Yep, and taking Josh's lead, it's a little unusual to see students only involved in one club even. I have a lot of friends that um, will, will be in two, three organizations, um, including also honor societies as well, which people are more than happy to be inducted into um, because it is, a, it is something to be proud of. Um, we have one of the largest, I believe the largest student-run investment fund in the, in the um, uh, I believe it's in the Northeast or in the country. Um, with about $2.6 million completely controlled by a student um, investment group, um, which is uh, included as part of part of the endowment. So this started off as a fund that an alum did not believe would, would last as long early in the, in the 1980s, and since has, has not had a year that at which it, it was uh, had a loss. But that speaks to a, just one of the, the plethora of things that you could get involved with. I have friends that are in the Enron Investment Club that are also in the, the dance company or they're, like you said, on the equestrian team. Um, and then all of these organizations and clubs are umbrellaed underneath the United Student Government, which Anissa and myself have had the pleasure of being a part of for so long. Um, and uh, the student government has a really an astounding amount of independence by the college. We're given a, a large um, activity fee budget where we can allocate that to how we see fit when it comes to student activity on campus. So. A lot of independence when it, when it comes to student-led activities, and students are definitely taking advantage of it um, in terms of, like I mentioned, the Amber Investment Club, the student government, and you'll see that in the activity, and like we, we mentioned, fifth most active student government in the country. I think that was 2017 that was made by the Princeton Review, um, and that's definitely something we're proud of, and uh, I, would, I would 
not venture to say that we're we're first at this point, but I'm pretty positive we're probably first most active at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to continue off of that, Woody did a wonderful job explaining um, USG, and that's a very integral part of a college community. Um, but I myself wanted to talk about just something a little bit more fun. Um, I did mention in the beginning that I am part of the Activities Council here on campus. Um, it is, its name is MAC, which stands for Moravian Activities Council. Um, and it's uh, very popular here on campus. It gives students um, wonderful opportunities to just, you know, stop studying for a second, um, stop stressing about class, and go out and have some fun, meet some people, um, and do activities that are appropriate for college students and that they want to do. Um, we do amazing on-campus activities. We do um, Wingo, which is a combination of free wings and bingo. Um, and you might think bingo is, you know, not as, you know, fun, but <laughs> but we bring in hundreds and hundreds of um, undergrad students, and they all line up out the door, out the, um, our Harper Union building, where it is, does take place, out the door, um, just to, to play bingo and win prizes. And we do a lot of amazing prizes, such as Apple Watches, AirPods, $200 Amazon gift cards, things like that. So you can tell where the interest comes from. But it is a great way to bring people together. And we do paint nights. We have comedians. We host, yes, we host um, off-campus trips to Broadway to Philadelphia, Eastern State Penitentiary, um, basketball games in the city, ice skating during winter time. It is, a, the, it is such a variety and our MAC representatives do wonderful work. And they are students that you sit next to in class that work tirelessly to um, make sure that these activities are, you know, of interest of college students, and something that they would want to do on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, or even Sunday, we do stuff on Sunday yeah. as well. And on top of all of that, what he did mention, a student activity fee, you do pay money to come to college, and we want to make sure that you are having fun with that. Um, so it is all free within your tuition, um, especially those off-campus trips, um, which is amazing, and a lot of students can kind of get out of their little academic bubble just for a second and really enjoy their time on, on campus. Oh, I can't pick sides because I have friends in both. Um. <laughs> So just to add on that as someone that gets to utilize the services, so Mac, like it costs three hundred dollars to go to the city, to be honest, for a show for transportation. I went to my first Broadway show for free at Wingo last semester, my very first semester. I met my best friend now, Lauren and Gabby, in a wing eating contest, which I won by the way. Um and that was the Amazon gift card. It was pretty awesome. And then with USG, I was never a part of a student government that has been as active as this one that has so many like open doors to different things. I came to them asking about a smoking policy and this semester there's someone writing up one to bring to the cabinet to speak about. We talk about meal plans. We go over infrastructure. So being the fifth most active, as what he said, we're probably the most active <laughs> now. I'm just saying. So to have that opportunity to be a part of that and on the other side have my activities fee being utilized so that I don't have to pay for awesome Broadway trips and, um, you know, with wings. So that's pretty <laughs> nice. <laughs> and of course, on top of all those great experiences, um, we do have an active Greek life here on campus. We have both four fraternities and four soror sororities on campus, um, 20 NCAA Division III athletic teams, um, and then of course, just so many other activities just happen on a regular basis through all of these uh, additional clubs. So um, to talk about the, the residential life in, in, in conjunction with this, uh, we do guarantee housing all four years for students. So in that sense, we are very much a residential college. Um, I did mention earlier about 25% of our students do commute, uh, but those who are staying on campus typically do stay on campus for all four years. Uh, very rarely do we see students who are electing to live off campus and when they do, they have to go through an application process and, and be approved. So very much so, not only are we not a suitcase school, students are staying here on the weekends and they are very much an active part of the community, um, but they're, they're really living here. They are part of this community in every sense of the word throughout their four years. So and that is why, as you've heard, they, they stay so involved and they go on these fantastic trips because they're here and, and that's what their, their opportunities are, are presented to them. Um, in addition to that, we do also see students who check out downtown Bethlehem. It is a great place. Um, there are festivals throughout the year for being a smaller city, bigger town, depending on how you want to look at it. There is so much going on, and our students 
really do take full advantage of, of all of it as well. Josh, I just want to give you a heads up. So we're uh, about 10 minutes to the hour, and we want to make sure we leave some time for questions as well. So, Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So I will touch on this part just, just briefly, um, but to mention that study abroad is, is certainly an increasing um, interest for students, um, particularly at liberal arts colleges, and we found that to, to be the same here. So right now, about 25% of our students will spend some time internationally. Um, we have everything that a student can imagine, though. So whether that is doing internships abroad, whether it's doing a short May term or a three-week experience, um, all the way up to a full semester or full year of study abroad. Suffice it to say that every student can study abroad on one of these varying types of trips. Um, and as you look at the pictures closely, you'll see we have a picture from the Oregon Institute of Marine Biology. Um, we do also trips also around the country that are class specific and allow students to to learn in a different classroom environment beyond just what we have here on campus. Um, every professor brings a global perspective into their classroom. Um, some of them are international themselves and, and coming from, from different parts of the world, but that is inherent to a Moravian liberal arts education is that it is also very much a global education. And so our students know that that's an opportunity and they, and they do really take advantage of it as well. Um, so to, to bring all of this to Ahead as to what does this mean for our students and, and how are our students taking what these experiences mean to them and, and using them as they move forward. Um, just a couple of quick things and you can you can see the numbers there. But what I really like to talk about is this 95% um, of 2017 graduates were fully employed in graduate school or a combination of the two within 10 months. Um, this number I know will be almost identical from the 2018 year. Um, but what's really important, I think, here is to emphasize the fact that not only are students completing their, their degrees and they're graduating four years and, uh, and they feel well prepared to do that, but beyond those individual pieces, it's the fact that our students are getting involved in all these things. And when they get involved, they, they start to understand the inherent value in being a member of a club or being um, part of a research team or doing an internship. And they work closely with our Center for Career and Civic Engagement um, to articulate these individual pieces of their life here at Moravian and why all of those play an important part in who they are as an individual, who they are as a professional, and how they will make um, a change in the world moving forward using these experiences. So our students sit down in an interview for a grad program or for that first job, and they're not just saying, yes, I have a degree and I did well in my classes. They're saying, I was president of this organization, or I was the treasurer of the Moravian Activities Council, and these are the experiences that I had there that are going to help you in this company, or that are going to advance um, the research in this program. And our, our students are able to really sit down and talk about those eloquently, um, very thoughtfully, and, and they know that what they experienced here in their four years goes well beyond their classroom educational experience. And I think that's a, a, a distinguishing feature, is that yes, this number is great and it's important for our parents to think about too, um, but it also means that our students are, are really well trained and well informed of what their path is going to be forward and how they can continue to navigate um, the waters of finding a job and, and going to graduate school well beyond graduation. Um, and just to give you a, some context, this is just a quick look at some of the places our students have gone on to work, to go to graduate school, um, and we send students on in, in, I would say, almost every major graduate um, program, whether that's a pre -med or a medical program for um, rehab sciences as well, of course, nursing programs and, and everything beyond that. So our students are really setting their sights high and achieving these, these really incredible goals after their four years here with us. Uh, now, just before we ask questions, I do want to make sure I touch on this, and I'll, I'll go through it quickly. But... Um, our application process is, is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Uh, first of all, it is free to apply to Moravian, um, and we are a rolling admission school. We have one early decision option, uh, and students are welcome to do that, and of course, all the typical, um, typical uh, ramifications come along with early decisions, so the binding commitment, um, and that early decision deadline is November 15th, but otherwise, it's rolling decisions. So usually in mid-October, we'll get applications in and start to read and release decisions 
um, in mid-November all the way through the end of the year. Uh, the only deadline for rolling admission is March 1st. So we're coming up to that now, but that is really the last deadline that students have to get um, their applications into us. Uh, when a decision is made, we will also be awarding merit scholarships. Those scholarships ranged up to about $27,000 this year. Um, that is renewable each year, and every student who is admitted to Moravian will receive some level of scholarship funding from our office. Uh, and then, of course, on the financial aid side of things, we only require the FAFSA. So any other funding students can receive is going to come through the FAFSA, either in the form of a grant or um, other endowed scholarships provided graciously by our alumni, um, and of course, through federal aid um, as well. So. Plenty of opportunities for our students to, to, to make this education possible. And as you see, there, our average financial aid package is about $35,000. So we, we do as much as we can, certainly, to make this um, a possible possibility for, for all of our students, regardless uh, of where they are coming from. So what questions do you all have? All right. Well, I've been watching the questions that have come to, have come in, and I'll just fire them off uh, real quick here. So, the first is: Do your Greek organizations have houses right there on campus? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the Greek organizations do. Um, the all four of the sororities and all four of the fraternities have houses on campus. Okay. All right. Uh, Someone asked, uh, they were interested in learning about your most successful majors. Interesting. Uh, is there a clarification on most successful, meaning just those who have the greatest success finding jobs after graduation or in terms of, of income? So the question came in this way, uh, learning, uh, interested in learning about majors programs that are growing, unusual, or highly successful. Very good. Okay, makes sense. So, um, well, our nursing our nursing program is certainly again our most popular, and that is where we see students continue on um, really directly into the nursing field, and that continues to grow for us. Um, we do have increasing number of clinical spots typically each year, and, and we look for ways to grow that. Uh, in a similar vein, though, we have seen a huge uptick in students' interest in the health sciences, which is what all of our students look into for the rehabilitation sciences. So. Those are pre-professional tracks for physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech path, athletic training, um, even music therapy, as I mentioned before. So that's definitely our fastest growing, um, but we do also have an incredibly strong education program, and we usually see a, a, an uptick every year of students who are involved with that, um, particularly, I think, because of the variety of experiences that they can have as an education major. They're getting into all different types of classrooms. We have every major certification that you can provide um, and that we place our students in those experiences. Um, they don't have to find that themselves. So those are the three that I would say are definitely the ones that continue to grow and are the most um, important for our prospective students as they look for making those decisions. Business is also typically growing, um, and that I think is a trend certainly nationally as well. All right, good. We had, we had a question about business, so what, that's you've covered it there. Uh, let's talk about admissions. Uh, ACT, uh, SAT scores, uh, A, are they required? And if they are required, what are the, what are the averages? Absolutely. So we do require uh, standardized test scores. We do not mind whether it is the ACT or the SAT. Either one is fine. Uh, we do encourage to send us every show because we will look at the strongest score uh, between the two. Uh, but if students are sending us an SAT, the average of an admitted student is around 1,100. Uh, and then for the ACT, we see the averages of 24. So we don't have those strict minimums, um, but again, those are our averages. If students do want to send us SAT scores and they have taken more than once, uh, we will super score the SAT. So they are welcome to do that. Actually, they're encouraged to do that to make sure that we are looking at their strongest composite score. Uh, does Moravian give preference for merit aid to students who apply early? No. no, we do not. So our merit aid is available throughout the entire cycle. Um, and as long as the student completes the application as an admitted, uh, we will review them for the same amount of merit aid throughout the cycle. A question came in, Josh, on the 
disability services. Um, it wasn't mentioned in the presentation. Any any thoughts on disability services on campus? Sure, sure. absolutely. So our um, our Office of Accessibility um, and Support Services works very closely with every student um, who is, is either coming into us with a disability who even might have issues here on campus. Uh, that goes just as far as if they've broken their leg or their arm and they need additional support um, in, their, in their academic experience here. Um, but they work closely with every student on an individual basis. So whether that is a student who has an IEP um, or a particular plan coming from high school um, and wanting to transfer that to Moravian, they'll, they'll work closely one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, and again, for any student who develops a need here on campus that they have found this just the transition into college has been enough for them to, to seek additional support. Um, they work very closely. So our campus is absolutely all about the supporting the community and making sure that the students are succeeding in every way possible. So we always encourage students that if you need support to speak up, to tell your faculty members, to tell your, your peers, um, to find who can be the best uh, service to you. Uh, but absolutely, we, we keep I think pretty good tabs on all of our students and, and those who need the extra support in any way, shape, or form get that while they're here. All right, excellent. Okay, we're got, there were a few more questions, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up with one more question. And the question actually came in as a, a, a question about cross registration with other schools. Um, you didn't mention the Lehigh Valley Association of Independent Colleges. Did you want to comment on that? Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So we are part of a consortium, the Lehigh Valley Association of Independent Colleges, um, and that is us, uh, a total of six schools. So it is Moravian College, Lehigh, Lafayette, uh, Muhlenberg, DeSales, and Cedar Crest. And so within this consortium, students are able to cross-register for classes. Um, as long as the class has available space and it works in the student's schedule, they are able to do that. They do have to provide their own transportation, but otherwise it comes um, free of cost to the students to, to cross-register for those courses. Uh, additionally, there are some situations where a student, for instance, if they want to study American Sign Language um, as their foreign language, we don't have that here on campus, but they are able to do that uh, elsewhere. And similar types of requirements are, are satisfied that way. We do have some students who also go on other colleges study abroad programs. Uh, we have everything really that students tend to look for in study abroad, but there have been instances where students find a program through Lehigh or through Lafayette um, that's more specific to what they were hoping to do, and students are able to take advantage of that also. All right. Excellent. Okay, so that said, we're a few minutes after the hour, so we're going to go ahead and, and wrap it up. I know you've got some contact information you wanted to share. There it is right there. So, whoop. Sorry about that. Let's, let, we'll bring that up. Sorry. There we go. There it is. Awesome. So, I want to uh, thank the Moravian College team, uh, Joshua, and, and the students for uh, this time that you've invested. I want to thank all of you who have joined us today. If you have additional questions that are specific to Moravian, go ahead and send them to, to, this, uh, to this email right here. Joshua, would that make sense? Should they send questions to admission at? Absolutely, yep. Okay, great, great. And you can always pick up the phone and, and ask the question as well. Uh, and of course, if you've got questions on liberal arts colleges in general, uh, you can visit liberalartscolleges.com there and contact us there. Uh, you can also uh, reply to the, um, the invite that you got for today's session as well. So, all right, once again, thank you everybody. We, I really appreciate you uh, contributing to, the, to today's session. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. It was, it was a pleasure and, and we hope you all learned a lot. If you do have questions, certainly don't hesitate to reach out. We're always happy to talk. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. And until next time, this is David Kohanek for liberalartscolleges.com saying take care and good luck with, uh, with this season of uh, both admission and enrollment. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.